Hey guys, welcome. It's Tink here. I wanted to do an updated video on Roulette Buddy. <clears throat> We've had a lot of changes lately, so I just wanted to make sure you guys are aware of what they are and how to use them. And if you're new to the tool, welcome. Uh, this is going to be a great video for you. It's, it's, I'm going to explain everything and uh, how you can use this tool to start making some money. So let's get started. The way I like to use it is in the, the desktop, the, the browser. You can use it from any device um, with, with a browser, phone, tablet, whatever. But of course, I'm going to be doing it from my desktop today. So what I do when I get started is I enter these numbers in. Uh, and for this video, I'm only going to do the last three just because we're just because we're just demonstrating the tool. Um, so let's do 15, 26 and eight. And the way I do that is I, I click the corresponding number up here in this portion of the screen. So let's see, 15, uh, 26 and eight. And you can see when I enter those in, those numbers pop up here. Uh, and if you enter the wrong number, you can always click on it and uh, delete it that way. If you want to start over and clear everything out, you can click this X up here. All right, so what happened when I clicked those three numbers? You saw that uh, you, you can see that one trigger is yellow and one's green. What exactly does that mean? Well, um, anytime a trigger highlights in yellow, that means that's just letting you know that, hey, uh, we're one number away. Uh, for meeting the criteria for this trigger to be activated. And whenever it's green, that means that the trigger has been activated. So what do I mean when I say activated? Well, if we take a look, so this is red. If we take a look at the trigger by clicking the edit button, uh, we can see that uh, if any of the 18 red numbers miss three times in a row, then we play red. That's our trigger. Um, so in this case, um, you know, we can see that we've played, that we've spun three black numbers. So that makes sense. Now the trigger's activated. So that tells us that we need to put some money on red and hope for the best. Well, you can see that we have spun a red one. So when I enter that, you can see that that trigger is actually going to go away now. So we won that bet. Yay, go us. Now we have two triggers that could potentially fire. And so I'm going to go ahead and enter eight because we just spun that. And let's see what happens. All right, perfect. So both of them did. Now you can see they're both activated. So now we just play them. So we would go to 19 through 36, put a chip there, and then second and third dozen, boom, boom, put chips there and play and and, and see what happens. Uh, now, what does this number mean? That that simply means that we're in the first step of the progression. So if you if you you know uh, if you're the type on you know these Martingale progressions, which 19 through 36 is an even money bet. Um, so if we would Martingale that. Uh, me personally, I don't like to go any higher than three steps. So this is just a, a nice handy way of me keeping track of what triggers or, or what step progression I'm in for each trigger. Uh, so we just rolled a 22 and let's, let's hit that. So I already know right off that, that we won the 19 through 36 and we've won this one as well. So if we actually enter that in, you can see they go away. We won, uh, both of those bets. Cool stuff. However, if we would have spun a one, for example, then we would have lost on both the 1936 bet and the second and third dozen bet. What would happen is you would see a, a number two. So I'll actually simulate that. Let's delete that. Let's say that we actually spun a one there. You can see that we're now going to be in the second uh, step of the progression for both those triggers. And if we do it again, you can see we're at three, you know, so on and so forth. That's kind of how that would work. So I'm going to get rid of those and we're going to get our numbers back here. So 22 was our number. And so now you can see that red, uh, we need one more black. So we got two now. If we do one more, then this red trigger will uh, will fire off. And I think you guys, you know, get the idea. So we got a nine red. So that that's actually going to turn this uh, this yellow and make it gray again because we're not we're no longer close to it being activated. So you can see. So hopefully you understand how that works. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay. So what's next? Let's say. Um, from here, uh, what are what are, what do these numbers mean? So this is simply just the threshold of the the trigger. So if I go in here and look at splits left, you can see that number is right here, and it's simply uh, saying that these 18 numbers, if they miss this amount of times, uh, so we call this the threshold. And you can change that from that page, or you can simply change it right here. You can see when you do that, uh, you're, you're you know you're affecting the state of that trigger. So uh, as it stands now, we are one number away from meeting the criteria. But if we change this, then we no longer are. Hopefully that makes sense. If we make it lower, then we can see that our trigger 
you know, has been activated. Uh, you know, of course that's, that's, you know, that's not the way we would, we wouldn't use it in that way, but that's just to demonstrate how that works. So if we enter seven, you can see now that's, that's the last number that was spun. You can see now that that, that trigger does in fact fire. But if for some reason we, we discovered over time that this threshold isn't, uh, it doesn't work well. We need to raise it a little bit because we find that we keep losing. Um, then we can simply just change that. Just like that. So easy peasy. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, all right. And then the next thing here is we can enable or we can disable triggers. So if, if you don't want to delete the trigger, but you, um, but you don't want to play it necessarily for that session, for whatever reason, you can simply just disable it. Just click this toggle. It goes away. And then we go over here to disabled and you can see that it's it's in here right here splits left all right so we'll go back to our enabled triggers uh, that's how you enable and disable uh, i'm actually going to re-enable that because i like that trigger so there we go you see now it's back okay now we've I've already shown you how to edit and then delete and simply deletes the trigger as you would expect all right moving on i don't want to i don't want this video to be too long here uh now i'll show you how to add a trigger so let's say so down here on the bottom right let's click this plus button We'll call this test. Let's say, let's look at this last number. This last number we spun was 21. Let's say for whatever reason, if we spin a 21 uh, uh, and we hit it, right? So we hit 21 one time and we're going to play uh, 22. This is a terrible trigger. Don't, please don't do this. So we simply click add trigger. Oh, and, and we want to keep it private. Now I'll, I'll explain to you what private versus public is in just a minute, but let's keep it private for now. So we'll add it. And you can see test right here is yellow because at any given time it is one number away from being activated, you know. So let's let's plug in 21 and we'll see that test is now green. And again, that's because uh, 21 hit one time. And that, that's how you create triggers. It's just that simple. So uh, now what I want to do is show you the market. Well, one more thing. Let's let's show you the these options up here. So when you click your profile, you have some options here. One of them's trigger alerts. I'll go ahead and turn them both on trigger alerts and statistics. The trigger alerts is, is what it sounds like. So if we enter another number, you'll see that we get um, an alert down here and, and audibly that a, whatever trigger has activated. So that's pretty straightforward. Now our statistics, what do these mean? So you can see right here that we've got, we, we've spun a total of 10 times in this session. And so uh, here, let's look at double zero. So down on the bottom left, that's the number of spins we've had since we hit double zero. Well, we haven't hit double zero, so that's why it's, it's a 10. And uh, the number up top right is, uh, it tells you how many times that number uh, has hit in, this, in the current session. So for example, 15, we did hit it. It was our very first number and we hit it nine spins ago. So that, that's how you read the statistics. Pretty straightforward. So the last feature I want to show you is the trigger marketplace. So we can go in here and it defaults to most popular. Um, so we can take a look and, and you can see how many downloads uh, each trigger has had. And that kind of gives you an indication of, of you know, whether people like them or not. Uh, and if you see one that you like, then you just simply go and, uh, you, well, you, first of all, you can see that I've added some of these. But if you see one that doesn't have that added and it has an add button, then you simply just click it. And now it's added to my dashboard. So Randall first is the name. So that, yep, yeah, right down here has been added. So whenever that, of course, gets triggered, it'll it'll notify me and I can play it. Um, now, if, if I want to make my trigger public, that's really simple as well. So this test trigger that we have, if I click on this pencil and I go down here, um, then I can simply update it. And now when we go back to the marketplace, I can look at newest and you can see Tink has just shared that test uh, trigger. Now that's not a good one. So I'm going to go ahead and get <laughs> delete that. And uh, so that's another thing. When you delete uh, a trigger that you're sharing publicly, it does delete itself from the marketplace. So I'm going to delete it and we'll go back and take a look at newest. And you can see that it's, it's no longer there. Uh, and so that's pretty much it guys. I just want to remind you that, um, this how to guide will obviously be updated to this video. Uh, and if you want, if you need any help at all, what you can do is click on learn more down here 
and that'll take you to my link tree. And I would recommend going to the discord. This is what our discord looks like. We've got, um, you know, in our community tab here, we've got uh, various channels that we can use to, to get to know one another and share strategies and ideas. And then we also have a roulette buddy section down here. Uh, and in the general, a lot of people like to share um, ideas or, 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 you know, how they're using the tool or anything like that. And then we also have, oh, and also if you have any questions, uh, feel free to, to post your questions in this general uh, channel and somebody will get back to you relatively quickly. It's a pretty active channel. And if you have any features that you would like to request, then we have a channel for that as well. And uh, you know, this is how a lot of, that's how a lot of features have come to be with Roulette Buddy is, is everyone using it and sharing, you know, what features they would like to see. So uh, highly, uh, highly uh, encourage you to get involved with the Discord community. If you guys have any questions uh, about something that maybe I didn't cover, feel free to throw them down in the comments of this video and I'll, I'll get to them as quickly as I can. And um, don't forget, if you like this video, please, please smash the like button and consider subscribing if you enjoy content like this. And last thing, uh, I stream uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, most of the time it's new roulette, roulette strategies or new Bacharach strategies, but we just have a good time. So if you guys wanna come hang out and, uh, and, and, and I, I encourage you to do that as well and hope to see you there. So that, that's all I have for this one. We'll see you guys in the next one. All right. Bye.